Thanks for tuning in to our bonus episode preview. This is just a short sample of this week's exclusive Patreon episode. You can hear the episode in its entirety by becoming a member at patreon.com slash indoctrination, where you'll gain access to all of our exclusive episodes and merchandise. I'm so happy to have Marissa back with me on the show. This is going to be for a bonus episode and um, is one of those like back by popular demand interviews where there was a lot of response to you talking about your story and how heartfelt it was and how impactful it was and how what you said really resonated with so many people listening. And we got to the end and then there was still so much left to talk about. So we're going to pick up some of those things today and I'll let you take the lead on that because I'm sure you you are aware of the things that we didn't quite get to in a way that I'm not. So welcome back. Thank you. It's so nice to be back and my stomach settles when I'm back in this space because it's you and I just feel a sense of comfort and strength and strength to pick back up and fill in some of the pieces and to kind of spend some time reflecting on what it's been like since I spoke with you the first time, considering you were, it was the first opportunity to to speak publicly. So there's been a lot and also some things that I wasn't in a space to talk about or wasn't quite sure how to talk about that was going on when I first spoke with you. And I kind of have more words and language to, to discuss some of that as well. So just really grateful to be here. Really grateful to be back. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. One of the things that is interesting to talk about, and maybe this is where we start, is what it was like for you to talk and the response that you may have gotten you know, when people listen back on how they told a story, sometimes they think about that's the, the first time they've said something out loud, or they have certain revelations that they've come to just by talking it through. And so not only are there revelations, but sometimes when you're listening to how you told a story, you're thinking, oh, I kind of skipped over some things. I left out something. So we'll pick up on on those things. But what was it like for you just to start to talk about these things that are emotional and powerful. Well, I think it's important to preface that while well, sitting with you is the first time I spoke publicly. I think for those that listen to the first podcast know that I started a blog on Substack in January, which is where I did start writing about my experience and sort of setting up the framework. And that's how the opportunity came up. So when I sat with you, it's important. I had some reactions that were already happening in my life that I was grappling with and processing when I sat down with you the first time. And now that I'm at a different stage than I was the first time, I can reference the fact that when I started my blog, my father was very resistant and rejected the framing of my childhood in a lot of ways in regards to calling it a cult environment or, and there were a lot of parts of my story and my reality that were rejected and resisted by my father. So I was holding a lot of space for that when I spoke with you and just due to wanting to navigate that, my my relationship with my father really mindfully, I chose not to speak about that during our first conversation. And we've since had lots of communication and back and forth that's um, uh, resulted in a place where we're both feeling like things are healthy and we're at a a greater understanding, which has been wonderful. So something that helped facilitate the repairing the relationship with my father was me speaking. I don't think he listened to the episode, but others that listened to it advocated for me and the way that I'm framing the story and sort of my intentions in a way that My father didn't understand when he first heard that I was writing a blog about my cult upbringing. I mean, that was what I think someone approached him about. So he reacted very reactionary and there was a lot of hurt feelings there. There was some time taken just to kind of process. And um, for me, I've already come to terms with the sort of relationship I want with my father, who's 82, and I want him in my life. I want to understand him and I want to be understood. So through the help of other family members and those that heard me speak, 
and share parts of my story and some of the difficult parts of my story that I had never shared, which did come out for the first time on your show, helped, I think, humanize me to my dad and opened up. I think you talked about the last time how a lot of times, sometimes parents forget the impact big life decisions have on kiddos. And I think it's also very difficult for parents to hear how their decisions impacted their kiddos negatively. And my father um, is the type of person that chooses to focus on the positive aspects of things, which I get some of, I am partially like that. So I appreciate that he holds a lot of space for the really great things that came out of my experience. He looks at my life and where I am and sees, he's very proud of me and sees a lot of accomplishments and is having had some difficult time putting or the two being true that I had a lot of difficulty getting here and it's taken tremendous a lot of things um which uh, you know including telling my story so anyway I, I say that to say so so that's one part of just sort of what's been going on since last being on your show and sort of the impact of telling my story in a way that is tender and just in a mindful way and how I, in a way that talks about, I mean, tender to me, I don't, honest to me and, and, and an attempt to really honor and highlight the fact that this is my story. It's not my dad's story. It's not anyone else's story. So one of the other positive things that came about after last being on your show was just the folks in my life that for the first time hearing some of those details. These are friends, colleagues, people that are close to me who said, wow, I had no idea that you had such a background. And it just sort of speaks to how I have kept a lot of my childhood private. A lot of people, even people that would consider themselves close friends of mine, weren't aware of some of the details and still are of of my childhood. So there's so many reasons why storytelling is so powerful, but I feel a lot more seen by people in my life to kind of help explain. That's one of the things I told my dad. It's like, I'm sick of, I'm sick of explaining to everyone like why I could, people think I'm weird sometimes or why I have an awareness of the world the way that I do and why I can exist in certain environments or have a certain level of empathy or because of the extreme environments I've been in. And like, I've had to extend my reality so much to where it's been difficult, but it also has, I've been able to stretch my level of empathy and compassion for others. Um, What I've experienced just has led to that awareness. So, so the text messages, the emails, the calls, like, oh my gosh, I forgot about from folks that I grew up with. I forgot about about that part of my, of of our childhood. I'm so glad you're telling your story. Thank you. Things like that have been messages I've received, or like I mentioned, I didn't, had no idea that was how you grew up, people that I met later in my life. So ultimately it's been a positive, it was a positive experience and it has led to um, other opportunities to speak and tell my story. Right. Right. I think Having a parent connect with you, reconnect, and understand that you can talk about things that happen to you that can't be undone. And that's, I think that's the hard thing for parents that if they feel that they've really made mistakes and there's nothing they can do to fully correct it and undo it, there is still a place for the parent in that scene. There is still a place for them to show up and to say, I hear you or I understand or I'm sorry or however they want to acknowledge it or just not be mad and allow you to have your feelings about it. And also, I think it helps for parents who care in retrospect to see that even though things happen that were damaging, their children still have resilience and they still have happy lives to whatever degree. I mean, I think that that is very healing for everyone involved. So the fact that you can put together your story and talk and and cry, but also laugh, you know, and smile. I mean, I, I think that that's very important for you to be able to see, but also for a parent to see. Absolutely. I'm currently taking um, 
my one of my first clinical courses with um, its child and parents. So child and zero through five kiddos and having a lot of discussions and practicing around um, in the realm of child development and just sort of that relationship with children and parents. I'm not a parent, um, but I am a child and I've watched that relationship with myself and my five siblings. And it seems like there's so much pressure on parents to, well, I think to do the right thing. And I understand that. And that's what I go back to when I try to repair damaging moments with my father um, is just sort of recognize that I do know that he did his best. And I don't think, and that's my circumstance. And I am lucky to be able to hold space for that when we have challenging moments. But with that said, I still think boundaries are very important. And I'm not here to advocate for staying in relationships that are harmful or hurtful in any way. And I've made my decisions about what type of relationship I will have with someone that at one point was questioning my story. And that's what my father was doing. And I was hurtful and damaging. And I did I just want to be clear that that isn't something that I just was able to cruise into navigating. It was very difficult. And this is all just, I'm just coming on the edges of getting to a place where I'm not, I'm recovering from being deeply, deeply, deeply hurt from some of the things, some of the ways my father reacted to me telling my story. I don't want, I, I really want to stress that. And if I have it, if I wasn't in a place and didn't have the support that I have, I don't know that the relationship could have been repaired. So I want to be clear about that. If I, and then if I, if I didn't have those advocating for me and just, just where I am in my life, if I, if this was 10 years ago or any other time in my life, it would have been a lot more destructive to our relationship. So I just, I, I want to really be clear about that. So for those out there that might be navigating these difficult relationships with family and trying to figure out the relationship you want with your family versus setting the boundaries. You know, that's not easy and it takes time and a lot of sort of self-reflection. And at least that's what's been helpful for me, sort of understanding what, like where my boundaries are. <laughs> 